The world has really changed uh, you know, pretty much very different from what I, when I was studying architecture in England uh, so many decades ago. At the time, uh, we were taught to have a really an inflated ego and that we were really the really next to God in creating whatever was fantastic and, and you know everything had to become a kind of objet d'art. And uh, that's how we were taught. And I think to some degree, uh, or mostly even now today, architects are trained to, to, be, to behave in the same manner. I've seen things changing enormously. I mean, at the time that we were studying, there was no problem about climate change. Uh, poverty levels were there, but nobody was really aware of them. And uh, so we were not really thinking of the world. We were really thinking only about ourselves. And that's what architecture was all about, that you, know, you really should create something fantastic which would, um, uh, you know, which would really change the world, basically, from that point of view. But now I find that um, uh, we really, architects really have to think in a totally different manner. First of all, the disparities that exist are becoming even more so, not only in the third world, but uh, all over the world. And I think architects can no longer work for just the 1% because that doesn't allow them to really, I think, serve humanity as, as well as they could because that, that's what they're trained for. So I think now they have to change. The, the whole mindset has to change as to how we now serve humanity. My work, of course, has changed enormously because uh, I practiced as a star architect for many decades. And uh, at some point in time, I felt that I wasn't getting anywhere. Uh, in the sense that how many beautiful buildings can you build, how many, uh, uh, you know, how many icons can you create, and so on and so forth. And uh, I felt that now the time had come to look at you know, my own practice, but also my world in a different manner. And it just happened at that time, in 2005, we had this terrible earthquake. Uh, which uh, somehow it cost us you know, 80,000 lives and 400,000 families were displaced. And I think that uh, perceptively sort of changed the way that I was thinking because I went there to see what I could do. And by that time, I had decided to give up my practice. I was engaged more in heritage conservation. And uh, I went there and I, I, I thought, this is not what I've been trained for. So I have to really rethink what is it that is needed and that is really what's changed my, my complete the way of working, way of thinking, and the use of materials also. Uh, because uh, earlier on, you know, you looked at uh, what the materials were available, uh, you know, right, refractive glass, and I used a lot of granite, I used uh, uh, a lot of concrete and steel and everything. And then I found that those had no meaning in a, in a situation where I was in. And gradually it dawned, of course, as we, since 2005, there's much more awareness about climate change. Uh, and architects really have to now look at it from the point of view as to how much damage they are causing to the planet by going on in the way that we are building. And if we start thinking, we will know that we have to now use really sustainable materials and we have to really rethink the way we design. There's a whole realization about how we are uh, misusing the resources of the earth. And there's a lot of discussion in the West regarding degrowth and other also, uh, you know, sort of uh, concepts that are developing as to how uh, we need to heal the planet. For me, of course, because I live in a country which has enormous levels of poverty, it has been something that I've been struggling with for the, for the last at least, uh, you know, 15 years now, uh, as to how do I reach out to those people in a manner that will help them to be able to become self-reliant primarily. And as I did, I have stumbled up across some really, uh, you know, what we call sustainable materials that have been there forever. I mean, they've always been used like earth and, and, and bamboo and, and lime. So what I would like to do really is to request all architects to rethink uh, the materials that they're using and uh, try to see which are the ones that have lower carbon footprint because that way you'll at least be able to tackle uh, you know, the carbon emissions, which are hugely uh, detrimental to, to, the, to, you know, to, to the world, basically. And also, uh, we have to see that we don't deplete the Earth's resources. That again means using materials that will you know, somehow let the other gen next generation also 
be able to survive on this earth. I think um, the, the, the W awards are really significant because uh, it's been decades before uh, uh, you know something like this has happened because women do bring a different kind of perspective, different sensibilities to the table. But also, uh, I work in a country where uh, women have been marginalized, where they, they suffer from all kinds of uh, disparities, and uh, they really have a very hard time. So uh, because they have never had really anybody looking at their conveniences, so unfortunately, they've not been able to see how they can improve their own lifestyle or their own lives. And I think uh, design can play a very important role in, uh, uh, in reaching out to these people who are marginalized. Because, see, it's not only the rich who need good design, uh, the poor and the deprived need equal attention. This is something called the Pakistan Chula, and we were very f fortunate and we're very grateful actually to World Habitat because uh, we, the Chula, which is the, an ordinary stove, has got this uh, World Habitat Award. And uh, uh, because it's made out of earth, so it's actually totally zero carbon. And each, each of these um, uh, stoves is built by the housewife herself. Um, the knowledge is, is passed on by something called a barefoot uh, entrepreneur that we train who goes and tells women how to actually make it. It's a very simple way of doing it. But because of it, there's no smoke and uh, all the health issues that were associated with the normal, uh, you know, the open flame stove, that is no longer there. And most of all, I think it's given dignity to women because uh, the stove itself is built on an earthen platform. And even I had not realized the benefits it would give and how it changed change the mindset of the villagers and the men around, because now the woman is no longer sitting on the floor and kind of, uh, you know, basically cooking in filth that might be around her. She's now elevated on an earthen throne, if you like. And now she sits erect, her back is erect, and she's sitting there, and now she's not only, uh, you know, seen as somebody who's, uh, um, you know, being beneficial for children because she's now cooking clean food, giving them out, and also no children get, uh, get caught in you know, flames, uh, don't get burned. So there's a huge amount of appreciation for this particular design. And if you look at the design that I did, it was very simple, and I'll be showing it today. But then when the women take it, they just transform it into a work of art. So it's really like elevating the whole process of cooking and, uh, and uh, you know, how a, a stove can really be a socializing place, how it can uh, uh, you know, increase the level uh, of, of a woman's respect. Women in the architectural field have had a very tough time, I know, uh, right from the beginning, because they've had to really uh, fight a lot of biases. And then, of course, we all talk about the triple burden that women have to carry. But more than that, I think society has not been supportive of women working anywhere in the world, I don't think. And even today, I think uh, there are many places where the glass ceiling exists in the profession where women are not able to actually rise above it. But I think over time, I now find there are many more of us. There were very few in the beginning, but now there are many more of us. And that itself, I think, is, is uh, creating a kind of uh, acceptability by society as well as by other men professionals. And I think uh, a lot of times we get daunted by, you know, whatever difficulties we face. But I think women just have to be strong, and inherently they are very strong. Jane Drew Prize is hugely, uh, you know, sort of coveted, and, and I know that it's going to make a huge amount of difference in uh, accept acceptability of my work that I'm doing. So I'm really thrilled that, you know, I was considered for this and that I was, uh, you know, that's been given to me. Because uh, uh, what I've been doing the last 15 years is very different from the other kind of iconic, you know, and stark, stark architecture that's going on at the moment. And people were thinking about it, but not really taking me very seriously. We thought, well, you know, she's gone a little mad, she's getting old, and so now she's doing all this. And I think Jane Drew Price suddenly shows that this is something that is of value to the world, and that there's something, there's these, you know, there are lots of examples that we can now put forward to say that this is what is beneficial for the world. So I'm just deeply grateful for this. Thank you very much.